us here at Green Food Solutions for the Grow Food at Home Easily series. And what we're going to talk about or today's kind of focus is going to be on propagating strawberries into your tower garden. So one of the examples that the uh, video came up with is, or that uh, explained was um, how to take seedlings from a local nursery or garden store and place them into the tower garden using the Rockwell cubes. So we're gonna do something very similar to that. We um, would recommend, so you can start strawberries from seeds, but the uh, strawberries are actually pretty hard to propagate. When we've tried them um, after, you know, over the last two or three years, we get a very low germination rate. Um, it uses a lot of our resources in order to do that. So you have a lot of spent rock wool that never gets used. And so what we started to do is we started to grow, uh, you know, strawberry plants using uh, already, uh, you know, our bare root strawberries, right? So it's something that you can buy from a seed store. Um, it's less likely that you would find it from a local nursery, but you can also buy a strawberry plant already planted and, and do that as well. But in this scenario, we actually bought uh, strawberry roots from uh, Johnny Seeds and many seed suppliers, uh, online seed suppliers will sell strawberry root, uh, bare root strawberries, right? So um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna switch from this video or this um, presentation over to uh, a kind of, or, you know, we're gonna use our phone to show you in live action how this actually works. Um, but just before we, we jump into that, I'm just gonna go over kind of the steps with you. So you're, when you do get these strawberry plants, they're gonna be full of dirt. So you're gonna wanna wash the, the, the roots of dirt, just like the video was saying. You're gonna cut the rock wool in half, place on top of the roots. And, and so you're gonna sandwich the, the roots between the rock wool and then tie it together with a rubber band. So we're gonna show you that really quickly. Okay, so we're at the sink and what we're gonna do, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take the, the you know, it comes in this big uh, rubber band and to save myself some time, because eventually I'm gonna pull these apart and you'll see how many um, individual plants are actually inside of this big rubber band. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first wash it from here. So I'm gonna take the, um, the plant ID marker out and then turn on your, sink faucet and if you see at the bottom there we've got a lot of runoff a lot of uh, turbidity um, a lot of the dirt that came with this plant which is totally fine if you're planting into a, um, a soil garden bed but since we're planting in hydroponics we don't want the dirt to actually uh, we, we don't want it to clog the pump and even though this is pretty fine dirt I just don't want any possible contaminant from the soil to get into our hydroponic system. So that's part of the reason why we grow hydroponically is to avoid some of the contaminants that come in the soil. So I'm just gonna wash this really quickly. Um, and then in a moment, I'll separate them. So now we're gonna take the strawberry plant roots and put them into the growing medium. Uh, we personally use rock wools. It's a super porous uh, material. It's it's pretty. It's relatively inexpensive, and um, it also is very porous. So the plant roots can grow through here. So if you're planting seeds in here, um, uh, the plant roots can kind of get right through. But today, instead, we are going to take the rock wool. So this is uh, already wet rock wool. We do this in order to reduce the pH of the rock wool to get it a little bit closer to, I guess, seven. And I'm just gonna cut off a piece of it, but you can, uh, from wh wherever you purchase your rock wool, uh, usually, oops, usually um, they'll come in these blocks, right? So today I'm gonna just show you an example with five strawberry plantings, roots. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the rock wool, take it apart where it naturally comes apart. And then we're going to slice it right down the middle. Sometimes you can go all the way through. It's not that big of a deal if you don't. And then open it up. So I actually ended up breaking it anyways. 
and I'm going to take strawberry plant root and you want to put the this kind of horn right here towards the top of the plant or towards the top of the rockwell cube and then the the root system inside of the rockwell cube and let the uh, the roots kind of flow through and then what I'm going to do I'll close it up kind of like a sandwich and then can you pause um, and you can see the strawberry here, how it looks in the rock well. And what's important here is that the roots are, um, the, the top of the root mass is underneath the rock well or below the, the, the top of the rock well so that everything stays nice and moist. And then I'm going to take my rubber band and wrap it around, be nice and gentle. And there you go, you've got your strawberry seedling ready to be transplanted into the tower. And so I put my clip in, so we prefer the clips, but you can also just pop in the, the net pot, pot. And then I'm going to really gently place the roots inside of the tower and then make sure that it's stuck snugly fits onto uh, the tower garden clip. And that's pretty much it. And we have this on automatic timer um, and we'll go over strawberry care in just a moment. So that's a little glimpse of the tower garden we have here as well as how you can easily take a root from uh, a place that you could easily purchase the roots of the strawberry plant or any plant for that matter, put it into rock bowl and transplant it into your tower to easily grow on a variety of food at home. Um, so then once you have it in there, um, here are some tips and tricks on how to take care of it. So you definitely want to start in the spring. So you guys are here in the spring. This is perfect. This perfect. is a perfect time to start. Um, strawberries need at least six to 10 hours of sunlight per day. So you definitely want to have it in a sunny spot if you can. And most varieties will um, give you a lot of fruit in a three week period in the early summer. There are some varieties out there that will produce fruit all year long. There are some varieties that will produce fruit um, uh, in cycles. So basically, you know, in the spring and then it kind of uh, goes dormant in the summer and then it produces a little bit uh, towards the end of the summer, early fall. So there's a, there's a lot of different varieties out there. So you definitely want to check into you know, what kind of variety you're getting and make sure you have the proper care for, care for it. But this is uh, overall, uh, you know, for the most part, the ones that, that are going to be well for, I guess, the Northeast environment, which I think most of us, most of the people in this uh, group are living, um, you're probably going to find it easier for a variety that um, will be harvestable in the early summer. Um, and then giving you kind of an abundance of fruit for about three weeks. You want to keep your tower garden pH at 5.5 to 6.5. You want it closer to 5.5 um, because a fruiting crop normally wants a lower pH level. Um, this helps the fruits to uh, mature. And then you want to remove runners. So it's kind of hard to see in this photo, but there's this runner right here, or it's called a daughter plant. And basically, uh, this plant up here, or the one behind it, is se sending out a shoot in order to create a brand new plant. So when you're growing in the ground, this is actually going to create like this big ground cover. Like strawberries are kind of like this big bushy ground uh, fruit. And um, the problem with that is that it will start to um, divert the energy of the plant or photosynthesis that's being created by the leaves to create that new plant. Um, and what you really want is you want to create, uh, you want as much energy going to the fruits themselves than to, you know, create the creation of a new plant. What's cool about this, though, is that you can cut this, you know, you want to cut it towards the top. And then what you'll see is kind of like the, um, let's see. When you cut one of them off, you can actually give one to a neighbor or put it in another Rockwell cube to start a completely new strawberry plant. Right, so what you see right here, right, the, it, that's what you'll start to see uh, in the new straw or the, the runner plant. And so you can actually take that and, and drop it into a Rockwell cube and throw it into your tower and you can start to kind of propagate strawberries. So you really never have to buy strawberry seeds again. Um, 
when you propagate your strawberries this way, uh, which is a really great way to save money um, and to let nature just run its course. Um, and strawberries are uh, subject to pretty much every type of fungus out there. Um, and so what you uh, definitely want to do in order to avoid fungus is keep your tower in a well ventilated area. Um, if you're outside, you've got it covered. Um, if you're indoors, then you definitely want to have some sort of ventilation system, whether that's an HVAC system or uh, fans that are constantly blowing, um, distributing air ac across the room. And then you want to set an automatic timer um, on the, the, uh, the, uh, Sorry, <laughs> you want to set an automatic timer for, for the, the pump. for the uh, pump uh, for 15 minutes on and 45 minutes off. Um, strawberry roots don't like it to be too wet, so, but you do want to keep you know in in a tower growing system. You definitely want to have the timer go on at least once an hour. So um, you know up to 15 minutes is probably the most that you want to have it on. Um, you can use neem oil on the plant leaves as the last resort. Um, and I, there are also other, you know, methods, but basically we wanted to just talk about some of the organic use it, or organic methods. Neem oil is deemed an organic uh, pesticide or fungicide. It's a very light fun fungicide. It's more of a pesticide than a fungicide, but it, it could uh, be useful. Um, and you do, you, when uh, the fruit is ready to pick, you'll know because it's going to be super, super red and, um, and juicy looking and, um, you know, Basically, these two strawberries are something you'd go for, but this one you might want to wait another two or three days before you plant, uh, before you pick them. And um, we definitely suggest storing the strawberries unwashed, so you didn't spray them with chemicals or anything like that. And even if you did, uh, we suggest you don't wash them until you're ready to eat them because they'll store longer in the fridge. <clears throat> So another way, uh, in addition to some of these really cool ways that you can actually go to a garden store and uh, uh, use the, the seedlings there to transplant into the rock wool and then transplant into your tower, or just using the things that naturally come with your tower garden system, like the rock wool and seeding that directly, putting it in a windowsill or outside. These are really easy ways that you can start your own seedlings um, or st start them from a nursery. But the, probably the most convenient way is you can obviously order seedlings online. Uh, at Green Food Solutions, we grow seedlings uh, at our greenhouse in Brooklyn. So we can deliver them anywhere around the country uh, to you in about three days to get you start growing that much faster. Uh, we send them about three uh, inches high. So you'll probably be seeing food and be able to harvest your food in anywhere from two to three weeks after receiving them. Uh, just get you started that much faster. You can always go to greenfoodsolutions.com uh, or email us and we can give you the menu about what seedlings you can order if that's the way you like to start growing.